I'm starting a 30 days, 30 speeches live challenge. So every morning around this time in the seven o'clock hour, I'm going to be giving you guys a speech that is live. And I'm going to be talking about different topics. So welcome and thank you for listening. I'd love for you to give me your feedback, your honest feedback, a rating from one to 10 on one being not so good, 10 being amazing on how you thought my speech performance was and any feedback you have um, in terms of what you really liked and what you'd like to see improve. And that would be really helpful for me. And at the end of each speech, I'm going to have a call to action, something that I'm asking you as the audience to do. And I would love for you to participate by either leaving me a comment, sending me a DM or a private message um, or an email. And my email address is I am Junie Mars, J-U-N-I-E-M-A-R-Z at gmail.com. So this is my first speech. Here we go. For me, the most challenging part is gathering up the courage to be able to make the leap. Some things you just won't know. You have to have faith and trust that no matter what happens, you will be okay. Step out on faith. These are words of wisdom from my amazing and super talented best friend, Michelle. She made a decision while she was working in the finance industry that even though it made her a ton of money, it just wasn't fulfilling enough for her. She wasn't happy. And despite what other people told her, she decided then and there that she would quit her job and go to Chinese medicine school. And not only did she graduate at the top of her class, she also opened her own acupuncture studio. Pretty impressive, right? Michelle shared with me that even though she's had a lot of success in her business, when she thinks about taking her life to the next level, fear starts to set in and hold her back and keep her right where she is. How many of you can identify with Michelle's story? I certainly can. The truth is fear is a natural part of our human psyches. It will always be there. It's built in to our subconscious minds to help us to survive and to keep us safe. In fact, one in every 14 people is affected by a fear-related disorder. But despite all that, despite the fact that fear will be there anyway, this is your life. And you're the only one who is responsible for changing it. So make the decision to take charge of your life and change it. Changing your life requires you to take full responsibility for everything that's happened to you up until that, this point. Meaning you're not going to blame anyone, any circumstance, any situation outside of yourself for the way that your life has panned out. And taking responsibility of your life means taking ownership. Now, is what I'm asking you to do easy? No, definitely not. It's not easy to take ownership of your life and take responsibility for everything that's happened to you. Of course not. But taking ownership of your life is owning your power. And owning your power, owning every ounce of who you are, that requires one thing. And that one thing, that one thing is love. Self-love. A journey for many of us that is challenging, tumultuous, and just plain rough. I certainly know that. It certainly has been a rough journey for me. This year, 
actually marks the 10th anniversary of when I nearly drank myself to death on purpose. It was New Year's Eve of 2008. I was getting ready for an amazing night out with my best friend and I was pre-gaming and drinking and I was drinking while I got to the party all the way through. And you know, drinking was something that I was proud of because I was known amongst my friends as the one who could hold my liquor. You know, I never got sick, I never threw up, nothing ever happened to me. I was untouchable when it came to alcohol. And I was proud of that. But that night, everything changed. Everything stopped. And I couldn't remember where I was or who I came with. And when I woke up, I was surrounded by three faces. And when my eyes came into focus, I realized it was the face of my mother, my father, and my best friend. Now, I commended myself on keeping my personal life very personal and private for my family. I didn't want them to know about my drinking. I wanted them to have the image that they held of me as one that was a teacher, a good student, a successful person. That's who I wanted them to remember me as. But when I woke up and I saw that the three faces were my mother and my father and my best friend, I freaked out and I looked at my best friend like, what is happening? Why are my parents here? And she looked at me and she leaned in and she said, I'm sorry, Julia. I didn't know what else to do. I, I got scared. I had to call your parents. It took nearly four EMTs, apparently, to carry my body to the ambulance. She told me, I was unconscious, incoherent, dead weight. When I looked around at my surroundings, looking at my mom and my dad and my best friend, I realized that I was in the emergency room in a hospital bed. Even though that was 10 years ago, every time I think about it, it still eats away at me because it was so embarrassing, so embarrassing. And it was the first time that I realized, you know, on top of all the shame that I felt and the guilt that I felt, that I had a problem and the problem was me. I realized for the first time that I didn't love myself. I didn't care what happened to me that night. I could have just died and I didn't care because I was so numb to pain because I had been spending my entire life trying to meet expectations of others. That I was so unhappy. I didn't know what else to do but drink. Drinking became my solace. It became something that I could do to numb myself from the pain and feel happy. Tony Robbins says that our lives don't happen to us, they happen for us. And waking up in the emergency room in the hospital that night was my life happening for me. It was a wake up call for me. It was saying, girl, are you gonna live your life or are you gonna let yourself perish and die? I had to really dig deep because I chose to live, which meant I had to face a lot of the demons. I had to face a lot of my fears. I had to face a lot of things that were scary for me, that hurt me. But in order to choose me, those were necessary steps I had to take. Since then, I've lost 55 pounds. I've left my job as a teacher. I've started my own business. I've created my own podcast. I've written a book and I've created a blog. I discovered that fear wasn't gonna win. 
and that self-love fuels courage. In fact, self-love is the key to courage. When I was willing to de dig deep enough into myself and ask myself hard questions about pain, about hurt, about fear, I was able to have the courage to not only love myself, but know that no matter what, even if I didn't know how things were gonna pan out and taking the leap of faith and having courage, I was able to know with extreme certainty that no matter what happened, I would be okay. Courage is having the faith that knowing that when you take that leap and choose yourself, you will not only survive, you will thrive. I want you to do something for me tonight. When you get home or maybe on your way home or even during your lunch break today, I want you to think about one thing that's holding you back. And I want you to really sit with that for a minute. And then next to that thing, I want you to write down one thing that you can do this week, even today, to start to face that thing that's holding you back and change it for the better. Then I want you to send me an email at imjuniemarvis at gmail.com. Send me a private message or a DM or write in the comments if you're bold enough on what you decided you were going to tackle and how you decided you were going to change it. You can change your life. It all starts with you. This is a new month with new blessings. Happy November. Have a beautiful, amazing day.